here on my iPad, uh, I'm using the app I've used before called Notability. Last week I used an app called Procreate because I was doing a lot of um, drawing. Um, today I'm going to be doing more writing than drawing, and this is a better app for that. Um, but again, you can see the six colors I'm going to be using up in the top right hand corner. You should follow along as I'm doing this with your um, chosen color, corresponding color. They don't have to match, but everything I'm going to be doing today is color coded. So uh, this graph represents the electrical value of a neuron, a specific part of an axon of a neuron, the electrical value there inside of the neuron. So the border of the neuron in any cell is going to be the cell membrane. And so on the inside of the cell membrane, that is the value that we're going to be charting here on this graph today. So to make all the math teachers out there happy, we should probably start by doing a little bit of labeling. Um, so the electrical voltages or the electrical values we're going to be using are millivolts. Um, we are, after all, dealing with the human body, so we're not dealing with extraordinary, extraordinary electricity, but uh, we're going to be measuring things in millivolts. And then um, the time is going to be in milliseconds. So this is a fast process that uses uh, a small amount of electricity to send a signal down the length of an axon. Um, and that's one of the things that's so extraordinary about this is that your, your body doesn't have, in the sense of action potentials and electrical communication, your body doesn't have a different type of signal to send when it's happy or when it's sad. An action potential is the same. An action potential is an action potential. The electrical voltage is the electrical voltage. Your entire body, you sitting there right now, your intestines and your stomach working to digest your food from earlier, you know, your muscles uh, working to keep you sitting up in your chair, you writing along with all of this stuff right now is all um, part of your neurons sending just a single signal like morse code we can just send either a yes or a no just like a, a signal or not a signal and all of your body's processes all the thoughts that you have all the variety of emotions that you feel and you know even us thinking about this concept right now is just your body sending a pattern of the same signal same intensity same speed no flavors involved, just a signal. And that's, that's really extraordinary to me. That's just a little bit mind blowing, uh, to think that all of that is just these couple ions moving that we're going to talk about right now. So, um, I'm going to start with a dark blue and I'm going to draw, um, not at the bottom of the graph, about like five eighths down the graph or something like that, right around here, I'm going to draw uh, negative 70 millivolts. So negative 70 is um, a value that is used for measuring action potentials. I just said that there is different, you know, it's just the same one signal all the time. Um, there aren't different versions of it. Uh, but that being said, um, some that depending on the size of the neuron, depending on the, um, the location, depending on the textbook that you read, that there is variability between the specific numbers that are used. I'm going to use a set that is internally consistent. It's basically just, you know, some values that might slide up or slide down on the scale, but the space in between those values doesn't really change. So I'm using negative 70 as the um, value for resting potential, which is what this phase is going to be called. And that is what you're going to be that's the value which I will use for assessments in this class. So I would encourage you to internalize negative 70. So I drew a line um, and a notability made it a straight line for me. But just to make sure that you understand, this is a biological process and uh, we're a biological machine. So we are, we are not really capable of keeping a steady state like that, like a perfectly straight line. 
the electrical value inside of your cell is going to fluctuate up and down as your body is constantly fighting entropy and the universe and, and as all those natural forces are trying to move ions from areas of high concentration to low concentration your body and especially in this particular process demands that not to happen so your body has to spend energy fighting that and that whole process results in fluctuation in this line but i'm just drawing it straight here for simplicity purposes but that does come in handy for what we're about to talk about. So sticking with this color, um, I already called this resting potential. So RP, let's draw a little line under that. And underneath of that, I need to, uh, I'm gonna put abbreviations for three different um, structures that are in the cell membrane, infused in the cell membrane of the neuron that allow this process to happen. And we're gonna draw the same little box, this whole thing that I'm drawing up here. We're going to draw this for all four stages of the process, but um, I need to know what those four parts are. Sorry, there's three parts of these three structures are. So uh, can somebody give me one of those structures? Uh, and you can just come off of mute and say it out loud. One of the three structures that are in the cell membrane that allow for ions to move back and forth across the membrane. Can you give me one of them? Excellent. So yeah, we were just talking about all this energy and all this um, work that your body does to, to fight the universe and um, the pump, the sodium potassium pump is the the structure that does that. So I'm going to represent that over to the side with a little P. There are two more structures that are involved here. The pump is responsible for active transport. It's using energy. Something like 25-ish percent of the calories that your body require every day is dedicated to just these little pumps just pumping their hearts out, moving these ions back and forth to keep this concentration gradient alive. So um, that should hopefully give you some insight into the value that these things, um, these pumps, sodium potassium pumps, um, provide to the body. We have two more structures, though, that are equally important in the process, even though they are passive transport, so they do not demand any energy from the body to work but they are incredibly important for this process as well. Can anybody give me one of those structures? Excellent. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and write Na to represent sodium there. Um, but I do want to not to be pedantic, but to, to emphasize a point. Um, the sodium channel there is a, an adjective, a hyphenated adjective that we should put into that, um, into that name so that we can be specific. Um, can anybody help me figure out what that should be? Sodium channel is a correct answer, but there is a more precise answer that helps us specifically as we are tackling this assignment. So I, I want to take a minute to, to make sure we get this correct. Um, I appreciate the effort. Uh, no, it, it, you don't have to include ion. These are ions, so they are positively charged ions, but it's not ion. It has to do with how these things are controlled. What controls their opening and closing? So one of the terms that might help spark your memory from your, your notes of the animation is, um, another way of saying this is gated. How are they gated? 
what controls are opening and closing. So these are sodium blank gated channels, or these are blank gated sodium channels. There we go. Thank you very much. I appreciate your persistence there. Um, so I know that might seem, again, extra, uh, but we want to make sure that we're talking about as we're as we're talking about this chart. Everything here is controlled by voltage. These um, channels, or I should say specifically, the channels are controlled by voltage. So they detect the voltage of the environment around them and open or close when their environment hits a certain value. So that helps understand this process and why things are going to get triggered at certain points. And the, the answer is the electrical value of their environment. There are different types. If you guys remember from just last week, we talked about neurons and we talked about how um, neurotransmitters carry a signal from one cell to the other. And when they carry it to the dendrite of another cell, they bind to the receptors on the cell membrane and they send a signal. That is a type of um, gate. When a cell gets triggered, when you trigger this process with a neurotransmitter, um, those are called ligand-gated channels, if I think I'm pronouncing it right, and they open and close when a molecule binds to them. The fingertips, the sensory neurons in your fingertips um, respond to mechanical pressure. So when you're touching your, your paper right now and the paper and the desk behind it push on your, your skin, which end up, ends up pushing on through your flesh and onto the sensory neurons. When those sensory neurons, the dendrites get bent, when they get pushed, that's when they open, they're mechanically gated. So here in this specific area, they are controlled, the sodium and potassium channels here are controlled by the electrical environment around them. So we call them voltage gated. And I think I just gave away the answer to the other one, which is potassium, so I'm gonna draw that as a K. So this little diagram that I have down here in the corner, um, you're going to be drawing this on for each of the different phases with a little sodium with Na and a K and a P. And we're going to cross out the parts that are um, the, ch the channels. We're going to cross them out when they're closed to help us keep track of all the moving parts here. Um, so as of right now, zoomed in on resting potential, and we have sodium the, so the voltage-gated sodium channel, the voltage-gated potassium channel, and the sodium-potassium um, pump. When we're here at negative 70, which structures or which of the channels are closed? Can anybody tell me which ones are closed? Which one should we cross off? Thoughts? Should the potassium channel be opened or closed? It should be. Thank you. Yeah, so the sodium channel should be closed. I'm going to cross it off. And also, the potassium channel should be closed. And then the pump is active. So we're leaving the pump over there as um, uncovered, uncrossed, because it is working. And as we said before, it's that's its job is to constantly be pushing sodium outside of the cell, potassium inside of the cell, and it wants, uh, it, it's working to create an electrochemical gradient. We're trying to create a high concentration of sodium outside of the cell and potassium 
on the inside of the cell and your your nature is fighting that and you're trying those ions are trying to diffuse and your neurons aren't perfectly solid objects all the time so they leak a little bit so some of these ions can force their way in and then when the pump finds them it pumps them back out and it's just constantly working to keep these ions where they don't want to be but when we do want to send a signal and there is a need to send an action potential or sometimes this happens accidentally but um, we need to raise the electrical value inside of the neuron to the point that one of the voltage gated channels opens up so i'm going to draw a dotted line here to indicate that this process this section this portion of the process can reverse if a signal like we were talking about before like the the body is moving up and down you know the this this line the negative 70 line isn't straight right there's some area above and below where that that might move back and forth there are other processes just the electrical noise inside of your body random things could cause this to raise a little bit and your body doesn't shouldn't just randomly make uh, you know respond to this static this noise inside of your body I'm saying noise just to mean like stuff, like background stuff. Um, so your body has a has a tolerance. It has a, a threshold that it has to hit before this process actually starts for real. And there is actually, there um, are some toxins that move this, <laughs> that bring these two things closer together, your resting potential and the activation threshold, they bring them closer together so that the body will, um, your muscles will seize up and you know, makes it harder to breathe or impossible to breathe. It's all kinds of bad things that can happen when, when these two lines get closer together. But I'm gonna draw a star up here at negative 55 millivolts. So that is activation threshold. So this whole process from negative 70 up to negative 55 is all resting potential. Even if it goes up a little bit or down a little bit, that's all part of resting potential. But as soon as we hit negative 55, that's like a mouse trap getting sprung, right? You've seen you know stories or videos or whatever of, you know, a mouse taking something off the mouse trap without triggering it which would be this dotted line part like okay didn't happen but if you trigger the mouse trap the mouse trap is going to go it's going to it's going to do its job there's no really reversing that process it's going to happen it's going to shut um so that's the same thing with active potential so uh, as this is sometimes called this is an all or none phenomenon um you either have an action potential or you don't you can't have a half an action potential um it's a it is an event or it is not an event. Um, so since we hit negative 55, it is an event. So we are going to begin. So I've switched my color now to my light blue color, but again, you can use whatever color you want, but just be consistent for the next section. Everything you have drawn previously should be one color. And now we're switching to the next. So because we've spent so much energy in the form of the pump to push all that sodium outside of the cell now there's an avalanche of sodium that wants to get inside of the cell so the line i'm going to draw is pretty much a straight vertical line and it goes all the way up to the top of our graph and it goes up to positive 30 millivolts And so this phase is called depolarization. So I'm going to draw over here depolarization. I'm going to draw my Na, my K, my P. So what happened at negative 55 millivolts that allowed this 
voltage to skyrocket? What physical change happened in the structure of the cell membrane that allowed the electrical voltage to change so drastically? And we're going to represent it here by on our little letters. Anybody? It's one of the Excellent, the sodium ions came in. So how could they come in? Exactly right, thank you very much. So, uh, so we are not gonna cross out the sodium channel because the sodium channel is now open, but we are gonna cross out the potassium channel. So what does that mean about the sodium channel? It's voltage gated, so it opens at what value? What is the key to opening the, the potassium, or sorry, the um, sodium channel? You can just type it in the chat if you don't want to say it out loud, anybody. It's a number that's on the page. Negative 55, very good, yes. Uh, so negative 55 millivolts, that's when the sodium channel opens up. It's important to understand that um, there are specific numbers and values which control gate, or voltage gate, um, each of these channels. So that's why we, were, again, brought it up before. So negative 55 millivolts is the opening value for sodium. So we have sodium uncrossed because we've the electrical value has risen to negative 55. Um, the pump, though, the pump um, is active during this time. It is working, but like someone trying to save the Titanic with a bucket, it might be putting water overboard, but there is no holding back. Uh, or there's no reversing the amount of water coming into the ship. Same thing here with the sodium. The sodium, the channel, is letting in thousands of ions, and the sodium, um, or in the pump, is is you know pushing two or three out at a time. So um, this pump is active but ineffective, um, and the sodium channel is going to close at what value? Anybody have a guess as to what value the sodium channel closes at? Exactly right, yes, it's uh, positive 30 millivolts. So those are the borders, That those are the opening and closing values for sodium. Uh, so sodium closes its gates at positive 30. And then so we hit the next phase. So I'm gonna switch to my orange and the next phase is not as drastic of an increase, but it is still a pretty, it's not as drastic as the increase, but it is a still pretty steep decrease. So we're gonna end up making kind of like a shark fin here. Um, but that, oops. Hmm. 
So that little shark fin shape is um, indicates the next phase, which is repolarization. So I remember them as alphabetical, depolarization, then repolarization, de re, alphabetical order, as far as the order of events here. And we just said that the sodium channel closes at positive 30. Uh, what do you think opens at positive 30? There we go. So the potassium channel opens at positive 30. Um, it's a little bit of a slower channel um, than than potassium or than the sodium channel, um, but it does um, when it opens up, it does let out all of those ions and it brings it. So now all the basically between depolarization and repolarization, we've flip flopped. We've um, flip flopped our channels, which has made resting potential the location of the ions in resting potential has flipped. So now in repolarization, everything's in the wrong place. And then we're going to hit our um, fourth phase, the purple phase. So with our last phase, it starts at negative 70 and loops. It starts at negative 70 and loops down and comes back up. Those are supposed to be equal, but I think it went in a little bit too far. I'm having trouble lining that up. You get the idea. Um, in that phase, that purple phase there, it's called hyperpolarization. So with hyperpolarization, um, the prefix hyper means to go above or beyond or go further than. Um, you might be confused because it's going lower. It's going down to negative 90 millivolts. Um, but what it, we're doing is we're talking about the path that the electrical value is going. So it started at negative 70 and it became depolarized, it rose the value up to positive. So with the, it, it's closer, positive 30, it's closer to, to, um, to zero than negative 70 was. So we decreased polarization. Uh, and then we repolarize, and then the cell comes back down to negative 70 to return to normal, to return to rest. And, um, but then it goes beyond that. It goes past negative 70. So we call it hyperpolarization instead of calling it like hypopolarization because hypo would be like lower. So some people get confused by that. Hyperpolarization. So in hyperpolarization, we haven't risen to negative 55 yet. So potassium stays closed, or sorry, sodium stays closed. Um, but what happens, and the reason this is a little bit tricky is that, as I said before, the potassium channel is a little bit slower. So the potassium channel is slow to close. So I'm gonna draw one line through it. I'm not gonna draw a full cross. I'm just gonna draw one because the potassium channel starts to close at negative 70, but doesn't finish closing until negative 90. So it's while that slow door is closing, we still have ions moving and then eventually it shuts. And then what finally becomes effective again? Well, we return to resting potential. I, I forgot to indicate that. Thank you. So we that we are going to return to resting potential, but we return to resting potential because we can move all the ions back where they belong because what structure is effective again? 
it is the pump. Yeah, there you go in the chat as well. Thank you. Um, so the pump has been working the whole time, but during depolarization and repolarization, it's been ineffective uh, because it's basically dumping ions where they don't want to go, and there is a basically a a slide that they can go down to go where they want to go. So it's super easy for them to return where they don't want to go. So the pump has been during depolarization and repolarization has been active, burning energy, but ineffective. And the pump is only effective during rest, when the channels are closed, or during hyperpolarization after the channels have closed again. So the pump is a trooper. We're, we're happy that it's there and it's, it works real hard, um, but is struggling to, um, during, a lot, during a lot of this process. So we didn't say it yet. Or we didn't label the bottom yet. Uh, we have all the values up here, but again, this, this speed changes a little bit based on a couple different things, but um, the length of time this takes is approximately one millisecond. Okay. Up or down a little bit, depending on um, you know, whether the neuron is myelinated or, or whatever, a couple of the size of it. Um, so this process, again, roughly one millisecond, we change electrical values by 100 millivolts, 120 millivolts total. Um, but this is, this is every thought you've ever had. This is every movement you've ever done. Uh, this is everything. Like this is how your body sends and receives information from the outside world, how you send information commands through your body. Conscious thoughts, unconscious thoughts, can, autonomic controls of your body are all just sliding a couple of ions around, opening and closing some channels. It's pretty crazy. Not to get all like metaphysical about it or whatever, but nothing in here, I, I never said in here about anything about, you know. So this is what an angry transmission looks like, or this is what a sad one looks like, or you know, this, this is what it looks like when you're cold. It's just, here is, we're going to move some ions, we're going to make a beep. And your body can understand what that beep means, um, which is amazing to me. Um, there are a couple more things to talk about here, but before we move on to the, the other two colors in my tray up there, uh, any questions I can answer about what this is? Uh, Emma's computer died and locked her out. Okay, I will, um, well, we're, we're, fortunately we're recording this, so I'll, I'll be able to share this, but um, can you ask her if she has any questions? <laughs> Otherwise, uh, th that's open to anybody. Any questions you have? Again, you're not getting recorded here. The software teams are not connected as far as hearing you or seeing you. So feel free to do whatever you want. You can either ask your question out loud or type it in the chat. So I'm going to ask for some responses here in the chat. Oops. So I, I sent two gifts. One of them is an archer hitting a bullseye, which is the first one that I sent. And the other one is a little animated person slipping on some coffee and falling down some steps. 
So if you are, uh, what we have so far, it's blank, you can't see them. So the first one is the one where you're feeling good. Um, please re react to the first one. You understand everything? Okay, that works too. Um, so the first one means you understand everything, you're feeling good, no problems there. Um, the little person falling down, the, um, the steps is, you know, not feeling great. And just to clarify or to make sure that everybody understands this, um, you know, this, you are allowed to not feel great and not to pull the rug off from underneath of you, but a lot of times you will feel pretty good right here. And then don't feel as great in a little bit. Um, once, not what we talk about next, but just we feel good because we just did it together and we followed along and did the whole thing, right? Um, but we'll keep working on this and we'll talk about this again next class and, and have you do some active recall and, and make sure that we do understand it for sure. But um, so don't don't feel bad. If you're if you're not understanding all of this, that's 100 percent understandable and normal. And if you are feeling good about this, I'm glad. But please stick with me because um, we're in that dangerous area of understanding where it can be a little bit overconfident or deceptive. What? Okay. So I've got one, seven, they've got about 14-ish responses, so we have a little bit more than 14 people in the class, but um, if you guys are representative of the of the whole, um, you know, we're 50-50 split, a little bit on the positive side of that, which is good. All right, so thanks for letting me know about where you guys are. Um, let's talk... Um, for the next section here of our discussion, let's talk about these other two colors and what we're going to do with those other two colors. So, um, to give you, uh, I don't know, some maybe perspective, maybe not perspective, but to apply this to a situation you may know about, um, in boxing, Muhammad Ali is either the greatest boxer ever or top two or three. Um, some people argue he's one of the greatest athletes of all time. Some people say he's just a great publicist. But one of the things that's amazing about Muhammad Ali, and if you don't know him, he's a boxer from back in the day. Um, one of the amazing things about him from an athletic perspective was that he um, could, could jab, so he could punch with his front fist um, and break a wooden board, which isn't outstanding. It's good. It's powerful, but you know, people in here might be able to do that. Um, the thing that was amazing about that though, is that using high speed cameras, they measured in the, back in the sixties, they were able to, to measure the speed of his punch and his punch was so fast that it was faster than the limits of the human reaction time. He could punch you before you knew you got punched or that a punch was coming. Uh, it's just phenomenal speed. And we have these limits and the, the reason we say that it was faster than you could, um, than you could know is because there is a limit to this. This process, this, these ions moving, um, can only move so fast and your body has to reset after each one of them. And this, there's a limit. So if the, the robots ever rise up, we're going down. <laughs> speed of electricity is basically the speed of light. And, you know, there, we're talking here about about 300 feet per second is as fast as the human body can send a command. Um, nothing, <laughs> nothing to the you know, 
several hundred thousand kilometers per second that the speed of light is. Um, and there are some limits because of the, the sh things that are moving around here, which I'm we're going to point out right now. So to um, highlight those, I'm going to use green here to indicate the first period of time in this process that represents that biological limit. We cannot send another action potential, no matter if Muhammad Ali is punching us in the face or the robots are, are coming for us. The time in between depolarization and repolarization, which I'm going to use this green and I'm going to make a little zebra stripe. Oops. I'll try to draw that straighter. That green area is called the absolute refractory period. So ARP, absolute refractory period. The ref, uh, refractory period is a, uh, the same, comes from the same word as reflect, to bounce back. To refract is to bounce back, to recover. It would be like um, when you, I'm sure nobody in here has done this, but you have seen other people in your PE class when the pacer test is going on. Some people might not run the pacer as hard as they possibly can. So they stop at a certain number, but you, the person who's doing the test and, and trying your hardest, you're going to do the pacer and it's designed to crush you. Like it's, that's the point. It's designed to test your biological limits. So if you did the pacer correctly, you're going to fall over that diving for the, the line with the, before the buzzer, the whole thing. And you're just going to collapse on the ground, just a pile of sweat and tears, and you're not going to be able to get back up and run again. The amount of time it's going to take for you to recover to get back up and run again would be a refractory period. If your PE teacher came up to you and said, I will give you a million dollars to get up and run again, but you, as the authentic, perfect PE student, has done the test as best you can and you've done everything to your hardest ex extent possible, you could not get up. No, no amount of money would allow you to get up and go run again because you have spent your, your biological limits and you just can't do it again that would be your absolute refractory period. But eventually there's going to be a time where you could get up and you could run again. It might be hard. You might not want to, but it's a million dollars. So I'm going to get up and I'm going to run a little bit more, even though it's very difficult. So I'm going to switch my color to yellow and I'm going to indicate the relative refractory period. So it's a time frame where you are not fully recovered. You don't feel like yourself. You're not back to normal after running that pacer, but you could do it for a million dollars. Can anybody tell me or guess where I should draw these yellow lines to indicate the relative refractory period? During what time frame do you think you could send another action potential, but it's just really hard to, or harder to. Um, almost. So once we return to rest, we are recovered. This would be you the next day or several days later, depending on, on how you feel about that or in your physical fitness. But um, if when, once we get back to resting potential, we are normal. We are fully recovered. And this is 
that we can send another signal just as normal. But there is a time in between normal and the absolute refractory period where we can send another action potential. It is possible, but it's harder. We require a greater stimulus, a greater command, frequency of commands to, to make us send another action potential. It's exactly where it would be. Very good. Thank you. So that's during hyperpolarization. So during this time is the relative refractory period, RRP, the relative refractory period. It is harder to send an another action potential, but it is possible. During the absolute refractory period, we can't send another signal here in the context of action potential because ions are in the wrong spot, because channels have already been opened, because the mouse trap is being sprung. I know we're using a lot of analogies today, but this process has begun and can't stop. As soon as we hit negative 55, a chain of events is going to happen no matter what. Even if you die, you're going to finish sending this signal. Um, this is this is a like chemical process that is get, that has been triggered and will complete. So we can't send another action potential during the uh, absolute refractory period because, again, ions are in the wrong spot, channels are not opened or closed correctly, and things are just in motion. So we can't start the process while the process is still going on. However, during relative refractory period, our channels are back to where they belong. Our ions are mostly back where they belong. The pump is working to get them back where they need to go. But we basically, we could go again. It's not the not a perfect, pretty scenario, but we can send another action potential. So this is important if we're trying to do something like run away from Muhammad Ali who's trying to punch us in the face. Um, sending more commands, we're sending another command faster would allow us, for things we'll get into later, would allow your muscles to work harder, to exert more force, to do, you know, to jump higher, whatever. Um, so we do want to, if necessary, to be able to send another action potential faster uh, without recovering all the way. So there is an advantage to being able to do this. And the reason it's easier or harder is because of the electrical distance between resting potential and the activation threshold versus activation threshold and the relative refractory period. So if we're somewhere that negative 90 and we got to send another signal, we can do it. We're going to need more stimulus to send that command because you're going to have to go from negative, uh, the electrical distance is going to be from negative 90 all the way up to negative 55, which is going to require more stimulus to, to travel that distance. So that might be things like um, the your neurotransmitters carrying a command from the central nervous system to the muscular system or to the motor neuron to make your muscles contract, we're going to have to, if we just did like a little twitch, it's not going to do the job. But if we send commands and have our muscles continue to contract and we send signals faster, our muscles will contract more frequently and they can kind of link their powers together, so to speak, and you can do more. But our brain is going to have to send commands with greater intensity or frequency to make that happen. And this whole process, this whole thing that we're talking about, um, is happening in one millisecond, in one section, on one tiny little three-dimensional space 
on one surface area of that in one section of an, of an axon. So if you imagine having to send a signal down to your foot or have a signal be sent from your, the bottom of your foot because you just stepped on something gross and slimy and to have that command come up your leg to get to your central nervous system, to go to your brain, to have that whole process happen and then have the command sent back down, that reflex R, that, that pathway that we talked about with a cockroach, all of those steps and processes you need to do this command, you need to go through this process on all of the axons, on all of those neurons throughout the entire system. And if you're imagining the length of your leg, you think about your leg as a big slice of, or a loaf of bread with all these slices. So your axon and the, the leg are that big loaf, and then you have these individual sections on that axon, which are like slices of bread. This little area, needs to go through this process and then it will pass to the next loaf of bread and or sorry the next slice in the loaf which is going to go through this whole process and they're going to pass this message along through little, every little slice is going to have to go through this process to get all the way to the other end of the loaf of bread which is all the way up your leg which is going to get to your spine then we got to get up to your spine like it's amazing how we can do that how we can send, we can step on something slimy, get all that information about the quality of what we stepped on and the, the consistency and the texture and all those other things, the temperature, and then send that, collect all that information from our sensory neurons, which are collecting all that information. But the whole thing, getting all the way up to the brain, getting all through this process of just moving sodium and potassium back and forth across this little tiny cell membrane. And we're just doing that a bunch of times really quick through lots of different parts of your body. And that's the entire human experience. It's stunning and impressive. And I love science. I mean, that's going back to the, the little song at the beginning. It, it's crazy that, that that happens and we figured that out that people have studied this and you know it would, we know the specific voltages and the um you know we've tested this out and seen this in action and it's it's pretty incredible so uh with just three minutes left in class i hope that uh i hope you have some level of comfort with what we just talked about some level of understanding even if you just understand the shape the phases, we can add meaning to this and we will add meaning to this next class. On Monday, we're going to go through, we're going to deconstruct this a little bit more, talk about some of the more parts, talk more about where things are happening and the whole process a little bit more. So between last class and this class, hopefully you have, again, some level of understanding. We asked a little bit in the chat and most people are feeling okay. Some people aren't feeling great. Um, but again, entirely natural. You are in the process of understanding this stuff and we will get there by the end. If you are, if you're not confident in that, or if you don't trust me on that, I, I understand. Um, there is, again, as a reminder, this Friday at 9 a.m. I will help with that. I will we'll go over the packet if you want to go over the packet. We'll go over this again if you want to go over this again. We're not going to do new instruction on Friday. So if you can't come to the thing on Friday, you're not missing out on new information. We're just going to be going over this stuff that we've talked about before, answering questions or whatever to help with that. Um, but hopefully, again, we've made progress and we can finish that on Monday. Um, we will be, there will be a quiz about this stuff. I'm going to put together another mastery style quiz. Uh, where do I post the recordings again? So um, the recordings are on our Biomed YouTube channel. So if you go, there you go, youtube.com slash B-A-H-S Biomed is the Biomed Programs YouTube channel. And there's a playlist on there, which I will be sharing in the weekly email this week that is 
um, I think it's called HBS Remote Learning Support. And that's where I am posting like the lectures from last week. There are some older videos that are on there from earlier in the year. Um, and I'm going to be posting the introductions to classes when, when necessary or appropriate. Um, like the little elements that I talk about at the beginning of class for people who've missed class to be able to get those instructions from there as well. But just a little bit, that's the, the YouTube channel for the program. I would encourage you to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, but so that way, again, notifications, you know how YouTube works. Um, but there's a bunch of videos on there for HBS and BI as well. So you don't need those yet, but you'll be using this resource for a couple years. So it is 1.55. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. Um, I'm going to stop the recording so I can get to posting that. But um, hopefully, again, you're feeling like you're in a, in a decent enough spot to continue on. And I will see you guys again Friday, 9 a.m. Just come right here if you want to have that extra enrichment or that extra time reinforcement. And then otherwise, I will see you guys on Monday.